Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Old Pulteney 18-year-old single malt Scotch whiskey. But before I get into this, I'm going to tell you about the profile of Old Pulteney Distillery, their core range, and this whiskey. The Old Pulteney Distillery is located in the Pulteney Town area of Wick, Cape Ness, in the Highland area of Scotland. The distillery was established in the name of Sir William Pulteney, who died in 1805, and after whom Pulteney Town is named. Pulteney Distillery was established in 1826 by James Henderson, also a distiller at Stamster, and carried on by his family under the same style of James Henderson and Company until 1920. In 1995, Old Pulteney was acquired by Inverhouse Distillers Limited which is owned by Thai Beverage. The water source is Loch Hempriggs. They have a stainless steel semi-louder mash tun. They have six stainless steel washbacks. The distillery has two stills, one wash still at 16.1 thousand liters and one spirit still at 13,000.2 liters. They use worm tub condensers. They have five warehouses, three dunnage warehouses, and two racked warehouses. The Old Pulteney Core Range. The Old Pulteney 12 year old single malt scotch whiskey, Asian X bourbon cast for 12 years, spotted at 43% alcohol by volume. The Old Pulteney 15 year old single malt scotch whiskey was launched in 2018. It's aged in ex bourbon and ex sherry cast. It's non chill filtered, has natural color, and is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. Old Pulteney 18 year old single malt Scotch whiskey. Aged in ex bourbon cast and Spanish oak cast for 18 years. It's non chill filtered, has natural color, it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. Old Pulteney 25 year old single malt Scotch whiskey. Aged for 25 years in ex bourbon and Spanish oak cast. It's non chill filtered, has natural color, it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Old Pulteney Hudart Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It's a non A statement, but it's a blend of 8, 12, and 15 year old distillate finished in a peated cast for 10 to 11 months. It's non chill filtered, has natural color, and it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. So, you've probably heard it said, or people have commented in other videos. Um, about getting a salty note from Old Pulteney Distillery Whiskies because they are right up against the ocean. You know, I kind of, you know, I've heard this and I've just kind of, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. I've been to Old Pulteney Distillery, visited in uh, 2019, tried the entire core range while I was there. I have a bottle of the 15 year old uh, when I was there. And, you know, sometimes I've had whiskies, you know, like a Bunhaven, for example, Bunhaven 12. Sometimes people will come at they can get just a little bit of a saltiness there. Uh, but more, sometimes you can get a little bit of a saltiness there. So when people say, oh, you can get a saltiness there, that's where the saltiness comes from. And I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever. I don't recall ever getting a salty note off of Old Pony, or at least not, nothing, not anything dramatic. You know, yeah, a little bit, you know, but nothing dramatic, anything that would sort of maybe think it's extremely different from any other whiskey, you know, just... Until I came to this one. I opened this on a Saturday. Had a wee dram. The sherry note wasn't really expressing itself really, really strong. There is a range in which you can have a balance between bourbon cask and sherry cask. You could have a 50-50. You could have, you know, predominantly bourbon with just a little bit of a sherry cask. Or you can have it where it's just cranked up 100% sherry cask, such as the you know, Glendronic 18-year-old Allardyce, which is 100% Oloroso sherry cask. This one is at about 75% uh, influence from the sherry cask. But it didn't really kick in until the fourth day. Yeah, I was getting a little bit on the first day, the second and the third, you know, a little bit there. But on the fourth day, when I got back to it, I was like, holy shamoleons. Not only was the sherry cask really expressing itself, you can see it's pretty uh, dark there. 
It didn't say natural color, but I'm sort of assuming it is. Uh, and it definitely seems like it. Um, just because it doesn't look like it's been tainted with. But not only did the sherry cask really show up, but the saltiness. It was like, holy cow. When I was a kid in the spice rack, in, in the cupboard, my mother would have these a little container of bouillon cubes. I don't know why. I probably get the idea from one of my brothers. You go in there, you take a bouillon cube, and they're just super, super, super salty. Beef bouillon cube, they're for making a beef stock, for making soup. And they have a load of spices and a load, a load, a load, a load of salt in it. And we take those little bouillon cubes and walk around and be sucking on, you know, a beef bouillon and salt. I feel sorry for my mom. She must have, like, she wants to make soup one day. She goes in there, in the cupboard, where'd all my beef bouillon go? I, I haven't been making any soup. Where'd they go? Because those stupid kids were eating them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, the advantage is, is having eaten, sucked on a beef bouillon cube, uh, it's lodged in my brain as a particular flavor profile. And that's when I started getting, I was like, and, and tasting, I was like, oh my goodness, man, it's so intensely salty. Now, let's start with the nose. Don't necessarily get a lot of salt on the nose, like a salty sea breeze. Although I live, I can walk to the beach in like five minutes. Uh, the ocean's right there in the middle of the night. I can hear uh, seals and sea lions going, arr, 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 in the middle of the night. Uh, and if I go for a walk down there, I can, you can smell the salty sea breeze. I maybe get a little bit of that, but what I'm getting right now is just very intense raisins, fig newtons. There's a savory herbal note there. Some chocolate, some vanilla, a little bit of dried orange citrus, perhaps a little bit of apricot, a hint of lemon. All of those are typical sherry cask. Seems like a lot of other sherry cask whiskeys. But then you try it on the palate. Wow. Yeah, salty. I mean, intense saltiness. That beef bouillon cube. There's some sweetness up front, but the savory note really kicks in, in in the middle. Some herbs, some chocolate character, perhaps a little bit of coffee, caramel, that little bit of that dried orange fruit citrus character, that Big Newton, vanilla, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, some other baking spices, but it, that salty character really, really kicks in. In fact, if you ever... I don't know, eat pretzels or something with a lot of salt on it and your mouth starts to feel dry. You can feel like the saltiness in, in your lips. You know, uh, eating, eating potato chips or something like that. The, the salt is having an effect on your lips and your tongue and your gums and stuff like that. And it's, it's something that's that salty. I'm getting that sort of a reaction out of this whiskey. So it is quite, quite salty. Now, chemically, scientifically, is salt somehow making its way into the cast and getting into the whiskey and because it's so close to the ocean? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't have any empirical research on it. I do see a cause and effect uh, with distilleries that tend to be right there on the ocean and having this note. And the people want to say, oh, there's no, you know, sodium chloride, make its way into the cast, yada, 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 yada. And it's just a phenomenological description. There isn't actually any sodium in there. Somebody write an article, someone do a dissertation on that, whatever. All I can tell you is it does have a salty character. And with that sort of almost like a meaty, savory character, it reminds me of beef bouillons or bouillon, you know, little bouillon cubes. It's not only saltier after three or four days of being open, the flavors are much, 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 much more intense. It really does seem like 
a lot of extraction out of the cask, uh, which is definitely uh, a sign of age. The only other way you could get this sort of intensity is if you're in a really warm climate, which, <laughs> oh, Wick is not in a warm climate. I, when I was there at, <laughs> at Wick Distillery in July 2019, it was pouring down rain and it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. I'll look it up and put it up there. But it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit and whatever that is in, in Celsius. It was cold. I was wearing a jacket. I was wearing a cap. And it was cold and windy <laughs> and wet and rainy. Didn't exactly feel like I was in the middle of uh, summer, but, but, it, but it was. So I like the development. You know, I gotta, I tried, I've tried this with water and I've tried it with ice. With ice, that saltiness stays. That saltiness stays. Maybe some of the, the fruit characters are, are diminished, so I don't recommend putting it on ice. I would say, you know, if I wanted to be less salty, maybe bring in more sweetness, make a cocktail out of it, make a Manhattan out of it or something like that, or an old-fashioned or whatever, and, and to bring in some sweeter notes to counterbalance the extreme salty notes and the uh, savory notes. But if you really, really like that salty character, I've got another whiskey that I would recommend. This is a bourbon, Jefferson's Ocean Asia Sea Cask Strength. And this definitely has that stream salty character to it, but it's a bourbon rather than a scotch. So basically what they do with this whiskey is they take the cask, they put them on a ship, the ship travels around the, uh, the sea, I think it even uh, crosses the uh, equator, and so what you get is a really salty uh, whiskey because it's been aged at sea. If you like an intense salty character, uh, then check out Jefferson's Ocean, particularly the cast strength, because you're gonna like this as well. So what am I gonna give this in terms of a score? It, it has an intensity without being super high ABV. You know, it, it's at a, you know, a very respectable ABV, but it's not a cast strength whiskey. If this was at cast strength, I, I can only imagine what that salty character would be like. It does not need to be any higher to have any more intensity of flavor. So it's a pretty intensely uh, flavored whiskey. I like the development. I like the counterbalance between the sweetness and the savory. The saltiness for me is a little bit too much, but given where they're at, and if this is a nat natural consequence of being where they're at in aging whiskey, then not much you can do about that. You're just gonna have some salty whiskeys. If you really like something salty, or if you would have food, you know, if you would have pair this with cheese, and maybe, or even something with more sweetness to it, maybe some dried fruit and so forth. If you were to pair this with food, I think that saltiness would actually pair well with uh, various, even desserts maybe. You, you could pair it with this and it would work really, really, really well. So you keep that in mind when, when trying this whiskey. I'm not a big whiskey and food pairing kind of a guy, but I think with these characteristics, uh, with that, uh, it would work with this one. And maybe even just have with some raisins or dried fruit or whatever. But I think bringing in more sweetness to counterbalance that intense saltiness might be my way to go with this. So what I'm going to give in terms of score, objectively, I think it's well made. I think it's well balanced and the saltiness. I think it's got really good development. It's got good intensity of very, it's got really, really good intensity of flavor without having to be cast strength. It's got a decent length of finish, medium to medium plus uh, length uh, finish. So I'm gonna go solid 88 points, a solid 88 points. What would I want to get it over 90? If, if there's some way they could take that saltiness down just, just a wee bit. Now that may be a signature that they're going for and their fans like. So if that's what their fans are looking for and that's what their fans want when they want on pull they, they want the salty whiskey, then don't change a thing because that's who your targeted consumer is. But just for me, I need something to counterbalance that salt. Other than that, it's an absolutely superb, superb whiskey. I, however, tend to like the old Pulteney 15-year-old. And you can see it's almost gone. So I've really uh, worked on this one. I think it's got better balance. This is more of your orange citrus uh, character. Uh, that, whereas this is more of your dried black fruit notes. So if you prefer more of the dried black fruit notes, you're going to want to go more towards 18 
but in terms of quality price ratio and availability, I would actually probably go for the 15 more than I would uh, for the 18. All right, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you have not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it. If you subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I go live or post a new video. And until next time, Slanja. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.